Hello, everyone. This is criminal profiler Pat Brown, and we've just gotten some news in that they've done new DNA testing. Well, they didn't, and I think a little bit ago, but we're just finding out about it, uh, that locks in this guy, Gene Hart, as the killer of the three little Girl Scouts in the Oklahoma Girl Scout murders in 1977. Now, for many years, there's been a lot of... Mm, theories about who actually killed these girls, even though this guy went to trial for it, he was found not guilty by a not so bright jury, and, but he still ended up in prison for the next 300 years, so he didn't commit any more crimes, but there are many people th think that he did not commit the Girl Scout murders. Now, I'm going to take you back, I'm not going to do a whole big thing on this, I'm going to put a link below because it's very complicated, but here's the basic gist of it. All right, so who is this guy? Um, this guy, he was in jail at the time that these Girl Scouts were, well, he was supposedly in jail when these Girl Scouts were murdered. He had escaped from jail. Why was he in jail? Now, here's something really bizarre. He had abducted and raped two pregnant women. He had left them to die in the woods by duct taping their nose and mouth, and they survived. You know what he got? <laughs> He got a very short sentence, and he was out on parole after, like, a couple of years. It's unbelievable. Because <laughs> what he did was really, he attempted a serial homicide. He attempted to kill two women, and they just happened to survive. He's a sexual predator. And had the women died, he would be classified in my book as a serial killer. And we just don't know if he had done something before or he was going to do something after. But serial killer, you know, who else abducts, rapes, and leaves to, tries to kill women? Serial killers. Okay, so he's, he was in jail, <laughs> unbelievably short sentence, and then he was get, put in, he got parole, and he did some burglary, so they put him back in jail, and then uh, he escaped, and they got him back, and then he escaped again, because I guess that was a really crappy jail. I mean, what kind of... What, what kind of security do you have there? Anyway, so then he was going to get the 300 years plus that he eventually did get um, because he broke parole. So let me see if you ra abduct, r abduct, rape, and try to kill two women, you don't get much time. But if you break parole because you did that, you get 300 years. <laughs> so, I don't know who's out there making this coming up with these stupid sentences. I mean, it, it's crazy. But anyway, he was out. He was he had escaped, and he was running about in this area. He had, was hiding in a cave just one mile from the Girl Scout camp. Now, he already knew this area. This is where he grew up. He, he grew up one mile from the Girl Scout camp. So when you're looking for somebody who would be familiar with the area and who was in the area, this is the guy, okay? You can come up with point your fingers everywhere else, but this would be your number one suspect. And he did become the number one suspect. So these poor three little girls were pulled out of their tents. They were sexually assaulted. They were murdered. And a lot of evidence was left there. Um, and there was evidence left in his cave. And the evidence matched quite well together. For example, the, a pair of uh, sunglasses was stolen and they were in his cave. Then they came from the Girl Scout camp, one of the counselors. And so people go, oh, well, maybe he's just a burglar because we know he's a burglar. Okay, so he just burgled the, pl the burgled the camp. He didn't kill the three girls like he wanted to kill those other two women, right? <sighs> so anyway, he had that. Um, there was also duct tape that was used, hair that matched him. The du there was duct tape matching the tape that was used on the girls back at his cave. Um, and there was this weird flashlight issue. There was a flashlight that, he, that had been manipulated with some newspaper, one to block some of the light from coming out, and another to keep the batteries from rolling around making noise. And this was a trick he had used before. Supposedly, there was also some newspapers back at the old cave. So there was a bunch of stuff. Let me put it that way. Um, so he went to trial, and the jury found him not guilty. And everybody was cheering and in the community, uh, apparently because they believed that he was being railroaded because he was Cherokee. Uh, so this was, a, this was a racial profiling thing. No. <laughs> we're profiling a serial killer. The dude's a serial killer. I don't care what his racial background is, uh, what group he belongs to. He belongs to the group of serial killers. That's what you profile. So anyway, he goes back to prison. He finally does go to prison. And uh, apparently when he's 30, in his 30s, he was lifting some weights and dropped dead of a heart attack. Aw, that's a shame. 
So anyway, um, this remained an unsolved case for many years. And so people had all these ton tons of theories, right? But then somewhere, what, what year was it? 1989. 1989, a sample, there was semen that was left there. And so they did a DNA analysis. Guess what? They came back with a partial match to him. In other words, he was not excluded. Uh, three out of five, whatever's. And, um, but the interesting part of the match, which is what people overlook, and I, I want to really pound this home. Supposedly, he matched one in 7,700 people. Well, that sounds like, hey, there's 700 and, where can we do it? 700 and 699 people that could have done it. No. That, first of all, the, the 7,700 were Native American. So that means the guy who committed the crime was a Native American. What Native American was right near those, those tents? Oh, yeah, the Cherokee dude here, right, this guy. Uh, but here's the other interesting thing. In, in America today, in the United States, I, I read this on Wikipedia, don't know the numbers are accurate, but there's 5 million Native Americans. So 5 million Native Americans couldn't have committed this crime. Only 7,700 of all the Native Americans in the country. So how many of those 7,700 happen to be right near here, you see? Because they can be in all the other states. All those, some of those 7,700 could, could be someplace besides Oklahoma, you know? And any one of the other states where Native Americans live. So you're going to have that 7,700, if you actually went around the community and got all their DNA, would shrink like this. And then what else shrinks is age, sex, and all that stuff. Like babies didn't commit this crime, so seven, some of those 7,700 are just one-year-olds, two-year-olds. Some are 80-year-olds. So it gets even smaller. So when you go down to the fact that there's only probably a negligible, negligible amount or number of Native Americans of that 7,700 group that were even in the area, you're, you know, now you're, now you're saying, okay, let's say there were two or three guys that were Native American that could have matched that DNA in that area of the, you know, of the 7,700. But which one of those two or three or four were serial killers who were in a cave near the tent? Okay, that's how silly it gets. I mean, you know, at some point when you have as much physical evidence as they had, much behavioral evidence in, in, in his history and at that time, and you have this fact that he is not excluded and he's it was a Native American who committed the crime guys it's him okay but it didn't seem to you know, many people seem to go on thinking it wasn't him so now they've done this new testing and the sheriff is now like see this testing this new testing has finally the new DNA testing that we have available today has proven it's this guy and he's like totally proven it now, they haven't actually released the actual details on it, but he's extremely happy that this is backing up the point, that this is the guy, uh, Gene Hart. So anyway, uh, I hope that we do see the exact results, but I'm, I'm going to say that I would, it's, it's got to support this guy. And so they've got new, they've got new DNA that's going to take that 7,700 and go, whoosh. oh yeah, him, <laughs> the serial killer. Okay, uh, so I just wanted to bring that to you because I, I think people do not understand sometimes what the evidence actually shows, especially when it comes down to DNA. So, so that's it for today, um, and I hope that puts to rest all these other theories out there. And if you like this video, please click the button that says like and subscribe to the channel, and also check my playlist for all the other crimes I have analyzed, and comment below, and I'll be seeing you next time. Bye.